you to a place just beyond imagination, where anything can happen and usually does. The flying cars from cartoons and sci-fi movies are about to become a reality. The era of eVTOL is upon us. Electric vertical takeoff and landing technology will be the next big thing this decade. It's really a convergence at a tipping point. New breakthroughs are emerging in the fields of lightweight materials, batteries, and flight software. It is a combination of different technology advancements. We're fundamentally trying to disrupt regional mobility. To enable engineering startups from all over the world to race to become the next big thing. Yet with any new society changing venture comes new challenges. These rides of the future aren't just for public transportation. We're not trying to solve any gigantic world problems. <laughs> you know, we just want the pilot to have fun. It's all about that, just have fun. Human ingenuity is incremental. The wheel, to the combustion engine, to the supersonic jet. And the next great innovation in transportation is already here, on the cusp of becoming commonplace. It is a combination of different technology advancements. It is an advancement in lightweight materials. It is an advancement in the energy density of batteries. It is also the compute power. Virtually everyone who's ever sat in traffic has fantasized about lifting off and having your car transform into a helicopter. And something that can solve pollution and congestion at the same time, even better. Volocopter, a German company, is placing its bets that the public will travel on air taxis first. Helicopters aren't new, but they cater to the ultra-rich. Air taxi companies are vying for a much broader segment of the population that wants a more direct route from A to B. The Volocopter's latest generation is the Volo City. It is destined to be the world's first commercially certified air taxi for the transportation of persons in city centers. Getting the public to accept such a monumental shift will begin and end with one question. The vehicle will be able to pick you up autonomously, will be able to ensure that the landing or the pickup site is secure, and that will then truly usher in a whole new epoch of mobility in cities, perfectly integrated into other modes of transportation. With Volocopter's multiple redundancies in both batteries and rotors, safety is front and center. So we have multiple battery departments, for example. We have nine individual battery departments. If we lose one, we can fully compensate for it. So really, any critical component can fail, and we can still safely complete our mission. And after safety comes price. Over time, we will be easily able to beat a black cab limousine or a black limousine uh, prices, mm -hmm. for example. And at the same time, I think we're offering a fantastic experience. And once the public feels comfortable enough to take a ride, will cities be engulfed with the constant buzz of rotors? A very common concern with people always is, you know, oh, but how loud are these vehicles going to be? A traditional helicopter has three distinct sources of noise. One is the internal combustion engine, two is the main rotor, and three is the tail rotor. And they all operate in very distinct, separate frequency levels. This technology convergence feeds every element. Fewer parts means less weight, means less noise. The Volocopter has only one source of noise, which is the identical rotors, of which we have 18, because our motors and battery, um, our propulsion system is extremely quiet, we're all electric. 
all of which has caught the eye of municipalities from all over, seeking to reduce urban congestion. Over time, we received over 100 requests from various categories around the world asking us, hey, can you build us a cargo carrying variant of your volocopter technology? The only thing that we're actually changing is the fuselage and the landing gear. And following a successful first test, Volocopter is poised for rapid growth. So we expect to launch these services in Paris and Singapore in 2024, commercial launch, and then expand as many cities as possible right after that. With all electric air travel comes longer distances. And eVTOLs are arriving that will not only take people within a city, but from city to city. Companies like Regent Craft have begun to create breakthrough maritime technology for coastal routes. Everyone's got a route that just annoys them to no end. It's these sort of 100 to 500 mile routes where if you drive, you're going to be stuck in traffic no matter what. And if you fly, you're going to spend longer in the airport than you're actually going to spend flying to the destination. This sea glider aims to replace the ferry and puddle jumping Cessna to connect not only coastal ports like Nantucket, but major hubs like New York to Boston or Los Angeles to San Francisco. We were fundamentally trying to disrupt regional mobility. We wanted to lower the cost and lower the time it takes to go door to door. We wanted to lower the emissions so that these vehicles could proliferate in the future. All things that the modern traveler wants. And to get there, the engineers didn't look far for inspiration. We knew there was this huge market opportunity for using this old technology, the wing, wing and ground effect vehicle, the concept. So we, we really set out to solve those core problems with that vehicle concept and build a new class of vehicle. Regent Craft's design opens up a new market for the electric flying vehicle because it's not trying to achieve the V in eVTOL. eVTOLs is really focused on urban air mobility because they're range constrained. Sea gliders can go further. We have more efficient takeoff because we use our wing instead of having to go vertical. We fly in ground effect, which is aerodynamically favorable. We don't need reserve fuel because we have the pullover on the side of the road option. We can just land on the water. Expect to see this cutting edge take on a classic vehicle in port cities near you. So our initial customer is gonna be airlines and ferry lines. These customers are so excited about the sea glider because it is half the cost of traditional aircraft operations and six times faster than a boat. This focus on regional range has positioned Regent Craft to be the first to market in not just the people moving business. Um, we really think that the commercial transportation is the entry point to market, but there's so many other opportunities we can, we can dive into, such as servicing offshore energy or cargo missions or in the defense world. And while Volocopter and Regent seek to move people and goods, Jetson out of Sweden is all about the thrill seeker. We're not trying to solve any gigantic world problems. <laughs> you know, we just want the pilot to have fun. It's all about that, just have fun. But like any world-changing advancement, sometimes it takes a while for technology to catch up with inspiration. An event in 1981 in the summer that ultimately gave me the inspiration for the Jetson was the release of The Return of the Jedi Star Wars movie. And those scenes in that movie when they're going through the forest, that was just awesome. And if seeing the Jetson glide a few feet over the Earth makes one think of space operas, there's a reason. For now, the Jetson is designed for pure entertainment and the personal flight operator looking to get away for a few minutes. The controls are also designed to appeal to the masses. We are very, very pragmatic when it comes to technology. We want to build as something as simple as possible. We want this thing to be as accessible for everyone when it comes to price. Because it qualifies in the United States as an ultralight, the time it takes to acquire a license is greatly reduced. 
something Jetson is counting on to jumpstart sales of this space-age-looking single-seat drone. Our target customer area is the United States. 85% of our clients are from there. The Jetson may just give the traditional 4x4 a run for its money on a ranch near you soon. We really wanted Jetson 1 to be uh, as compact as possible and, and very easy to use. So basically, uh, you charge it, you put the batteries, and you're ready to uh, fly to explore. And explore it can. And it's been tested over virtually every landscape on this planet. We fly it high, we fly it low, we fly it low, over the treetops, we fly it in the forest, we fly it on the desert. What you want is that you want a visual reference point as close to the jet zone as possible. And you want to be absolutely zooming. And while fun may be where it begins, Jetson's ease of use and compact size open up a wealth of other uses and industries. Transportation of valuable goods, border patrol, surveillance, and terrorist response. These are all areas where Jetson 1 would be very uh, a valuable tool. No matter who's using it and for what, the sci-fi inspiration is what will continue to fuel Jetson's creators. If you look at other EVTOL designs, they look more like airplanes or big helicopters, where we really, really want to um, have that very compact car-like design. In most of the science fiction movies, uh, flying car was really uh, replicating uh, a car-like design and just putting it in the air. We wanted to do the same. That, that's our goal, that's our vision. So our mantra is always, each mission requires a specific vehicle design. And going forward, we will see different vehicle designs complementary to each other, serving different missions. Which make and model arrives first is yet to be seen. One thing is certain, the age of Evie Tall is upon us all.